did a little beautiful little spot in Denmark or over up here. I'm overlooking Wilson's Inlet. Uh, it's about uh, 14 kilometers uh, long and about four kilometers wide and uh, also gets about uh, 50 times more of its catchment on the surrounding areas. Pretty good spot. So, Made it to an information center. Now, you see that structure on the top? I hope it's what I hope it is. Because if it's not, the dude's gonna kill me because I've walked all the way from the caravan park to the furthest corner of Denmark to come and see this. So, uh, fingers crossed, let's go and check it out. I'm sweating beads, absolutely. I'm gonna die. I'm dead. Hey, dude, I'm dead. I'm dead. Yes, the guy says I've got a good memory because this is where it was. It used to be standing on that concrete barrel there and it used to go all the way up to the top. A barometer. It was awesome. No wonder you can't find it in any of the searches. I know this was it. You can see how we're climbing up in a specially designed Little turret. Yep, you can see the little anchor points where it used to be. Oh, what a shame. Oh well. Come and see the kind folks at the Denmark Information Centre. You'll get a lovely view from the top of what used to be the turret <laughs> of the barometer. I have to see if I can find some old photos. Oh well, I made a big stuff up on the information centre, but I haven't made a stuff up here. I found the Denmark Bakery, and you can see by the awards behind me. Yeah, they're still living up. I, I noticed 2008-2009 was their first award, and I said I was here about 2008. Still going strong, 2019. So, uh, Jude's doing the ordering for me. I've got no choice in the matter. <laughs> So here we go, the Denmark Bakery has a lemon mint, no, steak and kidney. Um, Dean's got steak and kidney. Mm -hmm. uh, sweet, sweet. Um, and curry. <laughs> so we won't bore you with how I disassemble the pie, but I'll give you a run down at the end.
Good morning, everyone. Well, you might think, yeah, he's forgot a departing video from his caravan site. Well, no, caravan site's just behind us. Um, it was a little bit small um, for us, but um, hey, all we did was uh, hunker down inside and then went out and explored during the day. So it was perfect um, for what we wanted. And um, so we're just left out there into a nice wide open spot to just show you that the sun does shine. So yesterday's drone was a little bit overcast, but today has dawned an absolute cracker of a day. So just down over here, that's some, um, some little huts and things down there for the campsite. We've got a beautiful big campsite reception down the bottom here with a um, cafeteria and um, booking office for um, some of the adventures you can do around here. And uh, just looking up the river here, one of the adventures Looks like a bunch of kids coming down the old river, the Denmark River. And there you have it, the beautiful, picturesque Denmark River flowing into Wilson's Inlet. The old pelicans and everything, there's a few boaties out, so you can really see what a beautiful day it is today. So we're heading on to um, Albany. Looks like a great drive to Albany. Stay with us. Sweet as. Oh, g'day, g'day. Well, we made it successfully from uh, Denmark. Van just parked up here. There's uh, caravan parking up there. So we thought, well, that's it. We'll park there. Somewhere over in the corner over in there is um, Albany Township. So we're around in this big bay here. And in this big bay is a very popular tourist destination. It's the old whaling station. So uh, we're going to pop in here and uh, have a look with, I think we've scored it on a pretty good day. So it's a little bit of a breeze around as you can see from the flags just moving there um, but temperature's nice so it's a bit perler. Let's go check it out. So there you go Albany's historic whaling station. It says there that it's the uh, the only complete whaling station experience in the world. The historic whaling station was constructed in the 1950s and has been retained for the original industrial site it says there the original factory buildings and ships are state heritage listed. Whew, so we just made it in and boom, we are bombarded by this. Hilda Opka. She's an avid calculator. 60 years. It's interesting how she's kind of like picked on a species and got sort of like different forms and different sizes. And man, she's got a bit of corals. Really? It's nicely arranged too. So it's pretty cool, pretty impressive. Walk straight out and you got this nice big whaling boat just sitting there. There's the deadly old harpoon on the front. Pretty interesting, um, by the mid 1970s, Albany's buoyant whaling industry supplied up to 60% of the world's demand for whaling oil. 1970s. made it to the top, the outdoor steering area. There's the old wheel and then the compass would live in there somewhere. And then you got crow's nest, that's the word I wanted for. Somebody out the crow's nest. And then you got the harpoon down the front there. And I guess if you've got two, oh this is the sonar cabin. Let's so we'll have a look around here. Sonar cabin. So then he was able to, I guess, talk to the, the captain on where to steer and have a sonar way up high. It's a platform here that enables you to run like crazy down towards the harpoon. So I guess, yeah, obviously you had to react pretty fast. Come running down this plank and boom, there it is. Hey, just a really interesting piece that I didn't know that uh, when the harpoon goes off and grabs a whale, um, they can be up to like 50 ton and they could capsize this vessel in bits and pieces. So these little things are coming down the wall 
came down the wall a bit and then there's a few more underneath the boat here. And they acted like a fishing rod. So when you hook a fish and he wants to run, your rod bends. So it takes a shock and absorption and makes it harder for the fish to you know, get away. It's, it's making them work hard. Springs on this boat, the same thing. It's kind of like a big fishing rod laying underneath the boat and going up here. And when the um, whale wanted to take off, all these springs would take, off, take up all that strength of the whale and not put so much strength on the, on the ship. So it exhausted the whale. Pretty interesting invention. Some really, uh, some really interesting information that you read. Not only was the um, this area used for the um, the whales, but because the they attracted sharks, massive sharks, um, you know, and sometimes they, they had to catch the sharks so they could get the blubber out of the stomach of the sharks. There's one around the corner. I'll come around and show you this one. This one here, it's a record catch back in 1970. And uh, it was five meters long, weighing nearly uh, 1,500 kilos. And he caught it, it says with a hand line. Another one on those shark bites. It says here that the, the sharks could take out chunks of the whales that were moored on buoys outside there. And some of these bites would be enough to put in a 44 gallon drum. Very interesting. From my point of view, I'm sorry, but the wood-fired boiler. When the station opened in 1952, two Lancaster boilers were sourced from a Kalgoorlie gold mine. These second-hand boilers had been out of their use for 20 years before being transported to the whaling station and installed. The original wood-fired boilers can be still seen here, right behind me. The offcats of wine barrel production were sourced as fuel for these boilers, even though they were delivered by the truckload, they would only last a couple of days. So um, yeah, and this boiler shed, I don't know how much of it is still original, but well it is, it's historic isn't it? So this boiler shed and workshop originally came from the Aurobanda gold mine west of Kalgoorlie. It had been their engineering shop, Aurobanda. Which will put the, uh, the, uh, the tavern at Aurobanda, which of course sadly burnt in a fire but um, it's so cool when you're traveling around Australia and you can start linking things together and uh, yeah, right down there that little uh, sign down there on that door Kalgoorlie Foundry Engineers pretty stoked I just learned some really interesting information about this ball. So in the old days, Japanese used these balls for fishing. Anyway, this one here, a whale swallowed. And basically because it can swim down to three kilometers deep, his acids, you can just see here, and his stomach actually was pressurized into the ball. Alrighty, well, I think my time has come to an end here at the uh, whaling station in Albany. Oh, just insane. Just uh, the amount of stuff, history, information. It is really well done. You know, uh, huge shout goes out to everybody. The, the people working around here answering questions. Some of the people worked here 
it's hard to believe, you know, it was in November 1978 when things just came to a grinding halt here in Albany Whale League Station. So, uh, and among some of the people around here were those ones that were affected with jobs and incomes and things. But, um, yeah, incredible little spot. Put it on your must do list. Um, you know, obviously, all our opinions about whaling and everything have changed in a big way these days now. So, there's other substitutes out there that we're all using. It really puts it on the map. Anyway, we're going to find my dude. We are in the National Park and uh, I think we're over here, that was where the, um, the whaling station was and we've just driven from there um, over to here, the Gap Road and we get the Gap and we're going to try out the Natural Bridge. There is park entry fees, a pay station and beautiful grounds though, it's really good. You can see there, that's obviously the gap where everybody's swinging off of there. How cool is that? It's a wicked structure. And what a view. The sign back there says that uh, and back millions and millions of years ago, this of course collided with uh, Antarctica. So uh, a lot of these rock formations and everything created because of that separation. Wicked. Wow. Been here before and was ready for it. To be back here and see it. Nah, it's a whole new level again. Awesome bit of awesome bit of mother nature. Look at that. It's gorgeous. And I don't know where it is it, but down there. That's the natural bridge. We'll get you another shot. How awesome is that? Hear it going on, man. Is oh, look at the foam in that water. Whoa. Oh, that's impressive. Wow, how good is that? Come to help me, come to this gap in the bridge. Mother Nature was so thoughtful to put the two together within, I oh don't know, 100 meters of each other. Man, 
Thanks, Mother Nature. <laughs> but no, that's impressive, man. And we're so lucky to come here at this time because apparently this is all fairly new structure. So, uh, man, and it is beautiful. It's an excellent structure and uh, makes it easy, wheelchair friendly, walk and stick friendly, even Dino friendly. I've been able to master it without falling over yet. Well, at least not over the deep side. But no, get into this area. This is awesome. Really put a smile on your doll. Right, this might not look much. Yes, it's a little burnt and yeah, it's probably one of the most sorry rest sites I've ever stopped at. But even though it's sort of like peak time with people traveling or wherever, uh, back from work and things to Albany and things, it's, it's fairly quiet, so it'll do us. But a fire's gone through here probably in the last you know, six months, 10 months or something like that. So it's uh, regenerating quite well, but you can smell Yep, yes, definitely smell a little bit of ash. <laughs> but it's alright, and of course, with it, when it gets burnt like this, you see the tyres, you see the bottles and the cans and bits and pieces that are all left. So, as I said, a bit of a sorry sight. It doesn't help when there's no rubbish bins around this area, though, too. But, hey, self sufficient. We'll get our toilet and we're gonna, we can cart our rubbish to the next rubbish bin. So, um, anyway, rambling on. Today, we left. Uh, oh, comes another camper. We left um, Denmark, 60 odd k's, down here to uh, Albany, where we uh, promptly went to the whaling station, as you can see, because the weather was so bloody good, and, and it is still so beautiful, you know, it's uh, mid-twenties, not too windy, uh, just magic. So um, the whaling centre was awesome, went to the, uh, the, the gap and the, um, the bridge awesome just blew my mind worth worth the admission and um, and the memories it was good so then we uh, went through Albany quickly there where we filled up got some supplies <laughs> got some supplies and um, filled up with water got rid of the uh, the waste tank and yeah tootled down here this is a uh, about uh, 10 k's just out of Albany um, if we took a little lift just down the road, we'll end up heading to where we're going to Granite Skywalk later on. So it's just off the beaten track, so it'll be nice down here. I think I can see the Stirling Range in the distance, in the, uh, in the, in the haze. So uh, yeah, it'll be a nice spot here, I hope, to base ourselves. We'll whip back into Albany um, tomorrow, where we're going to go and do a couple of other things, and then either here or somewhere different later on. That's us in a nutshell.